processor was, was getting so cheap that it could be applied to other consumer electronic devices. Innovative new products poured in a seemingly endless stream from Apple's development laboratories, pouring a stream of cash into Apple's coffers. 250 million or a billion or however many uh, iPods are out there, you know, are what, are what built the Apple today, not the Mac. Approaching the age of 50, barely a quarter of a century after making his first million I'm sure you guys can see this. Jobs was worth $2.3 billion. Now, he picked up the pace of Apple's evolution. Computers, they were yesterday's news. He was conquering the world of music. Jobs was hurting his competitors. She was pretty well killed, killed off, the, off the music store. Um, and uh, uh, Virgin Mega Stores you know, slowly be disappearing around the world. Half a million songs are downloaded on iTunes every day. In many cases, changing artists' lives. Hip hop group The Black Eyed Peas were asked to star in an iTunes commercial. They later became the most downloaded band on iTunes. And they said, uh, they're not paying much, but they're going to give you guys iPods. What's an iPod? This is the new iPod. But Jobs' influence on the music industry went far beyond simple star making. Way before iTunes, Steve Jobs has been a part of music because every major studio has a Mac computer in it. I mean, the Mac computer is an artist's computer. Life in Apple's orchard had never been more fruitful. Then, Steve Jobs learned he had cancer. A standing ovation for Apple CEO Steve Jobs as he greeted the public for the first time in more than a year. He carried on working, but the years that followed were a roller coaster of hope and despair. The last few years have reminded me that life is fragile. Um, you know. Finally. He withdrew from public life. Only his closest friends saw how he was coping with the threat of an early death. Steve Jobs loved to take walks. It just was his, his preferred method of thinking and daydreaming ideas with people. One day, uh, I, I was out in Silicon Valley. He found out about it, and he conveyed to me that he would like me to come over to his house. And that this was just after his liver transplant, which as we all know is a very serious kind of thing that takes a lot of recovery. And he wanted me to come over and just talk about industry gossip in a way or events that had gone on since he'd been kind of out of action. He was very frail. We talked about his health and he talked about how he felt he was recovering. And in the middle of this, he said, uh, let's go for a walk. <laughs> and I said, really? Really? You're sure you want to go for a walk? We're about halfway to the neighborhood of walk. And he stops. You know, he wasn't, like, gasping for air or anything, but he was not a well-looking man. And I, I said, Steve, why don't we go back to the house? And he smiled or chuckled, and he said, uh, no, we're not going back to the house. He said, I just need a minute, and then we're going to go on to the park, because that's my goal. I set a goal every day, and my goal now is to get to this park. In the park, as if I remember correctly, we actually talked more about life and health. And, you know, I had had a heart attack some years before, and he was lecturing me about that. And the last thing he said to me was, you know, while you and I have been through lots of adventures over the last 15 years and we're going to have some more adventures to come. We never did.
On October 5th, 2011, Steve Jobs died. The next day, his closest friend and colleague, Steve Wozniak, paid his own tribute. I'm going to miss the chance to go to him and just sit down and share, you know, just first to person. How much fun we had uh, in how much fun we had in those days doing things together. Uh, you know, but you, you lose it, you can't ever go back. And just just have those those conversations that make us both smile. The most fitting tribute came from one of Steve Jobs' young fans. 19-year-old Hong Kong-based design student Jonathan Mac Long created an image on his Mac that went viral around the world. There was no real research behind it. I just uh, messed around on my computer and it just happened. Uh, it made sense to incorporate uh, his silhouette, his profile into the logo. You know, Steve Jobs had such a big impact on our world. wasn't just uh, a person who made all these great gadgets, he actually changed the way that we communicate. When you grow up, you tend to get told that the world is the way it is, and your, your life is just to live your life inside the world, try not to bash into the walls too much, uh, uh, try to have a nice family life, uh, have fun, save a little money. How amazing is it that we, we live in an era where his legacy will transform people's lives and experiences of, of, of technology um, for, for the foreseeable future. This single individual gave us the original Apple and the Macintosh and Pixar you know, and the iPod and the iPhone, <laughs> iPad. Uh, I mean, that, that, that is astonishing. Yeah, man. This guy did it for everyone, man. Steve Jobs created the most respected brand. Yes. Um, and um, you know, shook up the whole industry. And, uh, and he did it with a lot of panache and style. Um, and, um, That's uh, very generative. You know, great respect for him. Life can be much broader once you discover one simple fact, and that is everything around you that you call life was made up by people that were no smarter than you. He took stuff to a new place. And I do identify with that. It's exciting when you do that. So I do find the excitement with that. And he also made things that were beautiful, great to touch, great to hold, and great to look at, different colors. The minute that you understand that you can poke life and actually something will, you know, if you push in, something will pop out the other side, that you could, you could change it, you could mold it, um, that's maybe the most important thing. He had the ability to think out new ways of doing things, not just ways to improve what we have, do a better version of something, but do it in a totally different way that the world would swing towards. He would be regarded as the person who unlocked the creativity of a, of a whole generation. He's going to inspire a whole new generation. A five-year-old, 20 years from now, is going to create and design and invent and define a world totally different than the way we see it now. And it's going to be because of Steve Jobs. Here's a guy who revolutionized the computer industry, the music industry, the motion picture industry, the telephone industry. There's four. And maybe more, I don't know, but certainly those four. And if you compare them with Edison, well, there was the electric power industry, the motion picture industry, and the music industry. Edison had only three. 